Welcome back to part two. And in this video, I will go over minimum electrical code requirements that are specific to areas of the inside and the outside of a new single family dwelling. Let's do this. Now, in terms of where to start the rough inspections, many often choose to start the rough inspections within the attached garage. The reason may be because the garage is where a mixture of work usually takes place, such as the installation of the water heater, furnace, and if the electrical service panel is installed within the garage, and often it is, then it is where branch circuits originate and branch out to feed electricity throughout the house. And the following requirements apply at both attached and detached garages that have electrical power. A minimum of one wall switch control lighting outlet must be installed within the garage. A wall switch control lighting outlet must also be installed to provide illumination on the exterior side of the garage exit entrance door. The code also requires that a minimum of one receptacle outlet is installed for each vehicle bay. And the receptacle must be no more than five and a half foot above the floor. Verify that circuit breakers at the installed electrical panels will not be located more than 6 foot 7 inches from the floor or working platform to the grip of the breaker operating handle at its highest position. And verify that there is a metal mud ring installed where the UFER ground and the grounding electrode conductor intersect and connect. This can help assure the clamp connection will not be covered by the installation of the drywall later in the phase. Now in California, new single family dwellings are required to provide for future electric vehicle chargers, which includes the installation of a one inch minimum conduit raceway that originates at the main service or sub panel and terminates into an outlet box in proximity to the location of the future EV charger. The service or sub panel must also provide capacity to install a 40 amp minimum dedicated branch circuit and a space reserved to allow for the installation of the breaker. Keep in mind that the code merely requires accommodations for future electric vehicle installation. The installation of battery systems within an attached garage require the installation of a smoke alarm or a heat detector in proximity to the batteries. The smoke alarm or heat detector must also be interconnected with the smoke and carbon monoxide alarms that are already required within the dwelling. So be sure this device is roughed in at this inspection. Before proceeding into the kitchen area, let us briefly go over the two types of recess luminaires you will encounter in residential construction, IC rated and non-IC rated luminaires. IC rated luminaires, which stands for insulation contact, are permitted to be in contact with insulation and may also be in contact with combustible construction. Whereas non-IC rated luminaires, which stands for non-insulation contact, may not be in contact with insulation and must maintain separation from insulation of no less than three inches. Also, non-IC rated luminaires cannot be in contact with combustibles and must maintain no less than a half an inch from combustible construction. In kitchen areas, at least one wall switch control lighting outlet is required. And although kitchen countertops are normally not installed during the rough electrical inspection, the wall countertop receptacle outlets are and should be roughed in. Therefore, the kitchen floor plan should be reviewed in order to verify the proposed location of the kitchen countertops as it relates to the receptacle outlets placement requirements. And receptacle serving countertops must be installed so that no point along the wall line is more than two feet horizontally from a receptacle. So the idea with the kitchen countertop receptacle outlet spacing is that say you have an appliance with a two foot cord, you should be able to plug into either one of these two receptacles. These wall countertop receptacles must also be installed no greater than 20 inches above the countertop. Kitchen islands and peninsulas are some of the most common in residential kitchens and each require a minimum of one receptacle outlet 
unless the island or peninsula is separated by an appliance or a sink. A separated island or peninsula is created when the depth behind the sink or appliance, as shown here, is less than 12 inches. In this scenario, each separate countertop space will require a minimum of one receptacle outlet. However, if the space behind the appliance or sink is more than 12 inches, only one receptacle is required. Moving on to laundry areas. A minimum of one receptacle outlet is required to be installed within this area. This required outlet or outlets must be supplied by a dedicated 20 amp branch circuit. The washer or a gas dryer are permitted to be served by this circuit. However, no other loads can be supplied by this circuit, such as an electric clothes dryer, which typically requires a 30 amp branch circuit with four conductors. Hallways that are 10 foot or more in length must have a minimum of one receptacle outlet installed. A minimum of one wall switch control lighting outlet is also required to serve hallway areas. And verify that a smoke and carbon monoxide alarm outlet is roughed in the hallway in proximity to the bedrooms. Interior stairways, similar to hallways, must have a minimum of one wall switch control lighting outlet to illuminate the landings and treads. And stairways with six or more risers between floor levels must have a wall switch at each floor level to control the stairway lighting. Smoke and carbon monoxide alarms are usually required in proximity to the upper and lower area of the stairway at each floor level and assure the devices are roughed in at this inspection. Moving on to bathrooms. At least one wall switch control lighting outlet is required within a bathroom. A minimum of one receptacle outlet must also be installed in a bathroom and within three feet of the outside edge of the sink or sinks. So since a bathroom receptacle must be within 36 inches or three foot from each of the bathroom sinks, if this receptacle outlet was serving both sinks, then it wouldn't be conforming to the code since the receptacle outlet would properly serve this sink. However, it wouldn't be within 36 inches of the secondary sink. Luminaires installed within three foot horizontally from the tub or shower up to a height of eight feet vertically from the top of the tub rim or the top of the shower threshold must be marked suitable for damp locations or marked suitable for wet locations where the luminaire will be subject to shower spray. In bedrooms, a minimum of one wall switch controlled lighting outlet is required. Verify that a smoke alarm outlet is roughed in the bedroom. Also in bedrooms, the electrical code requires receptacles installed so that no point measured horizontally along the floor line is more than six feet from a receptacle. And if there is a wall two foot or wider in the room, then a receptacle is required in that two foot section of wall. And by gaining a good understanding of these minimum requirements we're covering in this video, will allow you to walk new work and be able to identify if there are any issues with the layout of the electrical receptacles or if there's a missing outlet for the smoke alarm within the bedroom. Closed closets have specific requirements related to where luminaires can and cannot be installed. And here is a great illustration courtesy of CodeCheck, which deciphers very well the clearance requirements of luminaires. Also assure that sub panels are not installed within closed closets or within bathrooms. Attics, underfloor spaces, utility rooms, or basements that are used for storage or that contain equipment requiring servicing must be provided with a lighting outlet. And the switch control to the lighting outlet must be installed at the point of entry to the space. Electrical cables that are installed within six feet of an attic access that are accessible by a ceiling opening must be protected by guard strips where electrical cables are ran across the floor joists or rafters. As we make our way to the exterior of the dwelling, exterior doors must have a wall switch control lighting outlet that provides illumination to the exterior side of the entrance exit door to the dwelling. Also assure that a minimum of two receptacle outlets are installed on the outside of a dwelling 
one on the front and one on the rear of the dwelling. Heating, air conditioning, and refrigeration equipment installed on the exterior of a dwelling must have at least one receptacle installed for service purposes within 25 feet of the equipment. Exterior balconies, decks, and porches that are attached to a dwelling and that are accessible from the inside of the dwelling must have at least one receptacle outlet installed. And a quick note on energy requirements which are verified during this inspection assure that the Reese's luminaires and ceilings are IC rated and that they are certified airtight. And you can usually find this label within the housing as shown here. Before concluding, I want to reiterate that all code items presented in this video are minimum requirements. Buildings can be designed and built above code but never below code minimums. So always defer to the approved plans. However, keep in mind these code minimums as you are inspecting, designing, or building a home. This concludes the rough electrical inspection series. It has been a great pleasure presenting this information to you. Stay tuned for the next Rough Trades Inspection Discipline. Stay frosty and stay awesome.